guys, I'm back with my video response to episode 246. And what an episode, the brown chicken, brown cow episode. But anyway, if you guys want to know what was with that little intro I did playing guitar there, check out the teardown for that. So um, anyway, and if you don't have a, um Android phone or an iPhone to get the teardown, I feel sorry for you because it's some funny stuff they put on there. So anyway, what an episode. What an episode, the war episode, and I've been looking forward to this episode. I knew it had to come because I sent in a review um, a little while ago, so, or a, not really a review, a uh, segment on modifications. But let's talk about this PT. You had a 535QR and you got rid of it? That is a really cool, really versatile wire pedal to have. And um, it's a shame. Shame you don't have it anymore. You don't actually have a wire anymore at all, I believe. So, um, but yeah, and I liked how all three hosts were on this show. And um, it sounded pretty cool. Pretty cool, though, Pappy. You did sound a little mellow. You did sound a little mellow. But, you know, everyone has their um, ups and downs, highs and uh, not so high days. Because you're always on a high, so I guess you were giving the listeners a bit of a break. And I hope you like my camera angles, as you commented the last time. This will uh, confuse you even more with my room here. So anyway, let's get to my little list here. A couple of points on the episode. Um, Larry Ashbrook's review. That was an awesome review. I love how you cut in uh, J-Man's voice into that as well. And um, it was really cool, nice sound samples. I mean, you really got the wire to sing quite well. Sometimes with wire pedals, it can be a little bit hard, depending on your setup, you know, to get it to you know, sweep through those right frequencies to make them really emphasize and jump out. And you seem to be able to you know, dial in a really, really cool sound, especially a lead tone. Um, most of the time, wire pedals and distortion, it, it can be a little bit tricky to get them to work, but you seem to have figured that out. And I thought that was a really good review, really interesting. Uh, your take on on how to implement the, the review and everything, it's just like a casual conversation. Um, I, I loved it. I thought it was really cool. Hopefully, uh, there'll be more to come. It's next to my list here, the word WAG, or WAG. It's funny you said that. I cracked up laughing when I was uh, in the car the other day listening to that. The word WAG, actually, I think someone brought it up on the forum, is um, actually an offensive racial uh sort of put down term towards sort of um, ethnic people. Well, that's what it is in Australia anyway. I've been called a wog a few times, so <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, interesting how different parts of the world um, have different things that they're, they're sort of, I guess that could be offensive or not, different words. But you almost coined the phrase there, guys, PT and I believe Pappy, you almost coined that phrase. So what's next? Bumpalicious D. I thought that was interesting that the Bumpalicious D actually does listen to the podcast and actually listens to it religiously like most of us do. Every week, Bumpalicious gets on there and even though he pretty much you know, gave the most negative review on a different review for another podcast, he was still able to come back and give you guys a positive one. Um, I think that takes a big man to do that. Maybe Bumpalicious is a big man for all we know. Uh, I was quite shocked. I did not expect that at all. So it was pretty interesting. Interesting to hear that. And uh, Pipes, don't feel bad. I was giving him crap as well in my video response. Not that he probably watches it at all. But uh, yeah, I was talking. I was talking smack with Bumpalicious D. Uh, the wah pedal painted like a Ghostbusters trap. I think that's an awesome idea. And Pappy. For the right price, the Alfalfa Sprout 6 Night Custom Shop can make anything happen. Anything. If you want to pay for the wash, ship it over here, pay for the custom paint job, it can happen. It might cost the world, but it can happen. So just think about that. That is a cool idea, and I might steal that one day. But, um, yeah, I, I just think, um, I when I saw the trap come up on the... Well, on the website, I was thinking, what on earth are they talking about there? But that's cool. Um, I love uh, custom, custom looking wire pedals. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. Nothing like a red wire pedal. Don't see that very often. Custom label there, of course. Um, even on the back of this, this plate I had made up where I used to work. There was a paddle shop. I worked for a 
a uh, bus company actually and I got the, the boys in the panel shop to make up a bottom plate for mine because generally crybaby wires and box wires come really cheap aluminium sorry aluminium uh, back plates and they're they're absolute rubbish they bend easy break if you put velcro on the bottom put on your pedal board they start bowing and warping and they don't sit properly so uh, if anyone else else there knows how to do some metal work it's a good idea to get yourself a steel crybaby plate bottom plate uh, so let's get into my wire review thank you very much for putting my wire well not really review i keep calling it a review my wah segment on there. I wanted to bring the world of modification to the Bliss community a little bit more and let people know that you can tune and change your you know, crybaby based wah pedals to sound the way you want them to. A lot of people always seem to you know, really, really bag out crybaby or standard crybaby pedals saying you know, they sound like rubbish, the new ones are nothing like the old ones and everything like that. And if that's the case, because not all of them sound bad, the wire pedal, that red one that I rebuilt, when I actually bought that off eBay, it actually sounded half decent. It sounded pretty good. I still pulled it apart, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it looked like hell. It looked like it'd been through hell. It had paint falling off it and everything. Um, the pot was all scratchy and it really needed an overhaul, but uh, not all standard GCB95 uh, crybaby pedals do sound bad. Unfortunately, it seems as though the majority of them don't sound all that great, and this may not even be the wire. It might be that the rest of your gear doesn't work with a wire pedal, or that type of wire pedal, or that in particular one. But there are things you can do. There are other couple mods that you can do as well. I'll just mention a few here. You can change the transistors in the wire pedal. You can drop them down to lower gain transistors, and you have a different sound. You have slightly lower gain transistors, and if you don't bump, a little bit more um, gain into the first transistor, like we are saying about the gain mod. You can get a little bit of a fatter tone out of it, depending on what you use. And, and the, uh, the first transistor in a wire pedal can really affect the tone a lot. You can also do what uh, the Jerry Can Trell wire pedal does, which is add series resistant to the actual wire pot for the, the terminal that's going to ground. And this probably doesn't make sense to anyone, but if you Read a schematic, you all know what I'm talking about. If you know how to read schematics, it's a long and boring journey. So um, that can darken up the tone a little bit as well. You know, have, a, have a knob on the side like they do with that there. Uh, there are a few other things you can do as well. You can have other circuits in there, but let's not get into that. This isn't what this is. This is a um, episode response. But anyway, guys, just want to say thanks for playing uh, my... Uh, wire segment. Thank you to everybody for your kind words on it. Um, I did put a little bit of effort into this one as opposed to my other other segments I've had on the bliss and um, I hope that it does inspire others to mod their pedals if they're not happy with them. Uh, what's next? The Gow, Eddie Hazel. I had never heard of Eddie Hazel before. I thought it was interesting how you guys mentioned that one of the um, guys that wanted him to be in the band to begin with went to his mother's house and begged and pleaded with her for him to join the band. And it's, it's quite the story and it's quite tragic that he, um, he did die at such, a, um, you know, such an early age. But it seems as though you know, he did have a few hits and that sort of thing and he, he did lead you know, the life of a rock star basically. So, you know, and I say that if you lived your dream, it's all worth it. If that's what you're into. Uh, let's, let's talk about what this episode is um, really entailing for the second half of it. The future of the bliss. Now, I completely understand with you guys. Making a weekly podcast, I can't even imagine coming up with new topics. And uh, always being on the ball, always being positive, always being upbeat. Yes, I've got to do this. After five years, five years of doing a weekly podcast, you would think to yourself, am I doing the same thing over and over again? Are people really liking this? Well, yes, people are liking this because I like it very much. I look forward to it every week. However, I completely understand it's not easy to continuously you know, make an episode every week. And you guys have got families, you work full-time jobs, you, have, you, know, you like to actually play the guitar, you've got other interests and things like that. So you know, doing this out of the goodness of your own heart can really um, play its tolls. 
if you do it every week, so that's understandable. So part of me is obviously disappointed because I'm not going to be able to hear the bliss every week, although part of me is also really, really excited. I'm really excited because I know that having a month as well, that you guys are going to put a lot more effort into your shows, like you're saying, you're going to have them really focused on something else, you want more user submitted content, and you know, I, I think that it's, it's going to be a good thing. You know, more focused episodes, a little bit more, I guess, I don't know if you want it that way, professional here and there, or a bit more guided, you could say. And if, if that's the way, the direction that you guys want the bliss to go, then, yeah, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm behind you, you guys, 100%, of course. And I'm sure every, everyone else there on the forum is as well. And, you know, yeah, it'll change things, but I think we're going to have something really big to look forward to. And it's, it's going to be great. So um, I understand that I support you guys. So I'm really looking forward to the um, next episode in three weeks. Three weeks. Now let's get to the last thing on my list here. I'm sure there's plenty more in the episode, but I've been rambling on for far too long. And that is the outro track by Larry Smith and Dave McLeod. That is awesome. Awesome track. Nice, nice sound of the wah there. It's just um, everything just came together so nicely. I listened to that three times the other day on the way to work, three times in a row. Um, it's fantastic. So, guys, once again, thank you for a fantastic episode. Let's move forward and look forward to the monthly episodes. I can't wait to hear that in three weeks' time. And, yeah, bliss on, guys.